Believe it or not, this duck was one of the lucky ones. It was rescued by the RSPCA, the Royal Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals, and underwent a successful operation to take a screwdriver out of its shoulder. The duck was brought in with a screwdriver through its right shoulder, with the point sticking out through its neck. The RSPCA believed it was a deliberate act. And after taking an x-ray, the duck underwent a successful operation to remove the screwdriver from its body. Richard Saunders from the RSPCA said he was shocked at seeing this friendly little creature in such a condition. The duck was given antibiotics and painkillers and the vet recommended the duck rest and eat plenty of food. And despite its large open wound, the duck made a full recovery. At just over 10 weeks, he stands much taller than many babies his age. He is nine feet tall and they call him Brefu a Kiswahili name translated to English as the tall one. But if he doesn't live in the bush anymore, he lives in an animal park in Kenya's capital Nairobi, where he cannot be preyed upon by lions or hyenas. This baby giraffe lost his mother when he was just five days old. Brefu never experienced the maternal bond between mother and child, which normally lasts 22 months. His mother died when a group of giraffes was being moved from one game ranch to another by the Kenyan Wildlife Service, who were keen to revive the number of giraffes at one ranch. Animal curator Dr. Adili Saeed says Marefu is now at the Nairobi National Park Animal Orphanage. He knows them as his foster parents. They don't think he knows his real mother, but is pretty relaxed. The lanky beau has already made friends at the orphanage too, hanging out with an orphan ostrich. Wildlife services say Brefu will stay at the animal park for the rest of his life. You see, he's a Rothschild giraffe and they are endangered in Kenya. They face near extinction in the 70s because of loss of habitat and illegal hunting. There are about eight known species of giraffes in the world. These four Manul kittens made their first public appearance at Berlin's Friedrichsfeld Zoo. The kittens, one male and three females, have feisty personalities. Manul cats are at home in the mountains between Afghanistan and Mongolia. The cats have the longest and thickest fur of any cat species and can grow to a size of 50 to 65 centimetres in addition to the tail of between 20 to 30 centimetres. Adult cats can weigh up to 3.5 kilograms. In the wild, manure are often hunted for their fur, which is used to make warm clothing.
Petra Schroeder, a zookeeper in Friedrichsfeld, said that the cats have been able to adapt to their harsh environment in the mountains of Asia. In the wild, manules lead a very hidden life because summer is very warm and it is bitterly cold in the winter. They are small cats which must survive in a continental climate where the temperature can drop to 50 degrees below freezing, so their whole life revolves around that. The cats hunt in spring and fall when there is a lot of prey, but the colder it gets, the fewer rodents there are and the less the cats eat. These four kittens will remain with both of their parents in the zoo for the time being. And when they are old and mature, they'll be sent to other zoos as part of a feline breeding program. The proud Kazakhstan agali is considered an endangered species in its native Central Asian region. Though it runs relatively free and safe in the Almaty Zoo, it has been hunted down and driven near to extinction. Conservation workers and scientists have taken a desperate and innovative approach to save the species. Doctors from the Kazakhstan Institute of Zoology have joined forces with doctors in Austria, France and Russia to transfer Agali embryos into regular sheep. The procedure allows Agali sheep to reproduce more quickly and give birth to a greater amount of children. Some types of Agali have already disappeared and the researchers have spent years in this program. The first Agali born to a regular sheep lives in the Almaty Zoo. It's a little boy named Mazan, which means pearl in the Kazakh language. The scientists and zookeepers have kept a careful eye on the first Agali born to a regular sheep, and it has kept a careful eye on its surrogate mother, as she does on her Agali baby. Kazan Bekolov, the head zookeeper for the sheep, says that his staff has observed the new agali seems to be growing quicker and healthier than other agali sheep who live with their natural parents. Bakulov adds that the young sheep behaves just like an agali, which at times presents problems for the surrogate mother who struggles to keep up with her young mountain sheep's climbing ability. But it is one of the best indications that the Kazakh scientists and their partners may have found a method to help bring back the Agali sheep to their mountainsides. She might be small, but Danka, a long-haired chihuahua, is Slovakia's biggest celebrity. The tiny pooch has been officially confirmed as the world's smallest living dog by length by the Guinness Book of World Records.
This may sound slightly odd, but the record holders do distinguish between length and height when handing out their awards. Dunker, who isn't much longer than a box of matches, is just over 18.8 centimetres long and weighs just 850 grams. She eats just two and a half ounces of dog food granules a day. Her counterpart in terms of height lives in Shubriness, Essex, UK. Whitney is a Yorkshire Terrier who measured 7.6 centimetres to the shoulder and is officially the world's smallest dog in terms of height. But Danka is not too bothered by this. In fact, the sensitive, fluffy pooch spends a lot of time relaxing on her owner's sofa. She's not too fond of sunlight, so her daily strolls in the garden are kept fairly short. And why not? At her weight, there's hardly any kilos to lose. Or shall we say, grams. This chimpanzee has taken Japan's art world by storm. It may look like any other trained chimp at the zoo or circus, but this three-year-old primate wears clothes, walks on stilts, all to the roaring applause of spectators at an amusement park west of Tokyo. But seat Asuka in front of a canvas with a paintbrush and she becomes an accomplished artist who has over a hundred works to her name, many of which have gone on exhibit in Tokyo. Asuka began drawing when she was two and a half years old. The trainer then brought a canvas and paint and let her take a brush to it. It all began when Asuka's trainer tried to see if she could draw on his notebook and she was able to. He then bought some canvas and got her to paint and discovered she was quite talented. Asuka grips her palette and slaps and jabs the canvas with her brush, creating works that suggest a blur of brightly coloured birds or even a chaotic spray of flowers. Asuka rarely uses black, opting for bright colours. And when she's in a creative mood, she can toil over the canvas for hours on end, creating a number of works, each of them unique. Asuka has been known to toil over a painting for hours.
Experts say many apes, especially female or baby apes, will draw if given the tools. And the creative flair is a sign of their intelligence. On the morning of September 11, Mike was preparing for a business meeting on the 78th floor of the North Tower of the World Trade Center. Then, a plane smashed into the top of the tower. Mike says he felt the building shake and sway. When the tower shifted back into position, he grabbed Russell and made straight for the emergency stairs. He knew it would take a long time but couldn't risk the elevator after smelling the fuel and smoke from above. The journey took more than 40 minutes, and even when they had reached the bottom, Mike still didn't realize what had happened. Unable to see what was happening, Mike panicked, thinking that the building was going to fall on them. He ran and ran, letting Russell guide him before finding a subway station in which to take cover. After a long day walking around Manhattan, Mike finally made his way back home to New Jersey, where he could tend to Russell and check she hadn't been hurt by flying debris and smoke-filled air. Amazingly, the three-year-old Labrador was unaffected by the dust and fumes. All she was in need of is a good bath. After Russell's heroic guide dog descent, she was allowed a few extra treats. Known worldwide for its stalky legs and full pink plumage, the flamingo has become the target of an Argentine zoo's conservation efforts. The La Plata Zoo on the country's northern coast launched a program to aid the survival and reproduction of its 123 adult flamingos. The project consisted of reproducing flamingos and to find a method to manage the incubation of the eggs and the chicks. A large element of the program will be focused on increasing the amount of carotene in the flamingo's diet. According to Carlos Gayari, the results can be seen in the colour of the plumage, which will deepen with more carotene. He also hopes surrounding the birds with a calm atmosphere will help their survival rates. He says it's a matter of diet, the amount of protein especially, and a lot to do with the tranquility of the animals. The zoo claims to have 25 flamingos between one and three years who were born in captivity, 18 chicks and 14 eggs. Flamingos can live up to almost 50 years in captivity, can reach up to five feet in height and have a wingspan of approximately five feet. Because of the remote areas in which they live, including parts of Europe, Central America, the Caribbean, South America and Africa, flamingos have very few predators. Their only defence against a predator is to fly away. A Convention on International Trade in Endangered Species of Wild Fauna and Flora has listed the Caribbean, Chilean, Andean and James flamingos as in need of protection and considered to be threatened. In 1924, according to the New York-based Wildlife Trust, the James Flamingo, which resides in the high-altitude region of the Andes Mountains, was believed to be extinct, but was rediscovered in 1957. Barely two years after he was born, Captive Philippine Eagle, Kabayan, meaning my fellow citizen in Filipino, was set to be released from his cage at the Philippine Eagle Center in Malagos Davao, Southern Philippines. The Philippine Eagle, also known as the monkey eating eagle, is critically endangered with its population down to an estimated 500 pairs. 
The captive eagles used to be fed live chickens before an outbreak of bird flu. But to reduce the possibility of being infected, they were given freshly slaughtered chickens. Capayan's release will set off the Philippine Eagle Foundation's experimental program of releasing captive eagles back to the wild. A radio transmitter was attached to the eagle to track its whereabouts. The Philippine eagle was placed on the list of endangered species by the International Union for the Conservation of Nature in 1987. Shortly after, the Philippine Eagle Foundation was formed. Since then, many eagles have been bred and born under the conservation breeding program of the Foundation. Aside from breeding and research, the Foundation and its volunteers regularly run tours at the centre and hold bird shows at a nearby bird park to educate the public. The bird show at the Malagos Garden Resort calls attention to the plight of birds which are indiscriminately being shot in the wild. The decrease in population has been blamed on hunting and the shrinking forest cover. The Philippine Eagle Foundation give Filipino names to the captured eagles brought to their center for treatment and rehabilitation. The oldest is Pagasa, which means hope, the first Philippine eagle hatched and bred in captivity. Philippine Eagle Center Information Officer Tatit Quiblat said that the main mission is to set free the offspring of their captive birds to help complement its population in the wild. The Philippine Eagle Center is anticipating three other eaglets to come out of their shells. Each eaglet requires at least 1,786 US dollars annually for its upkeep. The center hopes bird shows will not only attract tourists, but donors as well. They creatively try to employ the bird's natural mannerisms and gestures to draw out interesting characters during the shows. The bird shows try to exemplify the problem of the coexistence and integration of the species with people. It also hopes to be a vehicle of awareness for people.